In this video, I'm going to flip through the month of October in my Erin Condren monthly planner and talk about how I used it functionally and what worked and what didn't and what I will continue to do going forward. Hi, my name is Kristen and I post functional planning videos on my channel a couple times a week. If you're like me and you need a gentle reminder to just keep it simple, please make sure you're subscribed and I'll be right back. This is my Erin Condren monthly planner. It is the Etta V version that came out this year um, in July. It starts in July. I've been using a monthly planner for weekly planning for at least a year now. Previous to this, I was in the Harmony Colorful um, and I had that one set up to be the January through December 2023, but then this year I decided to switch to the academic calendar to line up with my son's school year so that I would have the whole school year in one book. And so I've been in the Inspire Design since July, and so I've been using it for four months now, um, and I love it, and I have no plans to change. So first of all, that is the first thing that's working, is this planner is so functional for me, it works wonderfully and I'm just it's just not something I plan on changing anytime soon so this is how I use my monthly spread now I don't typically do this kind of decorating on my monthly spreads and this is just a strip of washi and I used this planner Kate like doodle sheet um, for the month there but normally I just use the um, like the design that comes with the planner because I love it and um, I like to coordinate with the colors of the planner and that way it takes all the guesswork out I don't need to buy a bunch of kits it saves me money it saves me time it saves me energy um, but this month because I love Halloween I decided to add a little bit more pizzazz to it and luckily this washi I have from planner Kate match the um, colors from the Inspire design. So I thought it worked out really well. Um, and that, I just love it. I love Halloween and any chance to use Halloween stickers and stuff, I'm gonna take it. The next thing you might notice about this is that I have my planner set up to be a Monday start. Erin Condren does not offer a Monday start planner for the monthly spread. So this is something I had to do on my own. I made these date strips myself so that they would be white. Um, a lot of sticker shops will sell a Monday start date strip um, set. I will link some from Planner Kate in the description. My thing is that I don't want them to be colorful. I like the um, simple look that comes with the Erin Condren planner. And um, for me, I have to have a Monday start on my calendar. And unfortunately, since Erin Condren doesn't offer that, I had to make my own stickers on my Cricut. And so I did that. I tried to replicate their fonts and the style as much as possible so that it just kind of blends in. It, you can't really tell it's there unless you know to look for it. Um, so that's what that is. And then I've added these Planner Kate week number scripts down the side here. And I don't know, I think I have actually a set of these I can show you on the sheet, perhaps. Yes, here they are. So I purchased these in I buy two sheets whenever I set up my planner. I buy two of these, this is STK 108, and it's week one through 52. And so I buy two because um, when I label my weeks, some weeks straddle across two months. Take for example, week 44, which is October 30th through November the 5th. If you go to November, that week is still up here and that's October 30th through November the 5th. So we've got two week 44. So that's why I need two of these. And then what I do is on the, I put the extra one there and then for the rest of the sheet that I have that has a lot of these leftover week numbers, I go and put them as placeholders in the weeks on the pages I'm gonna use. And that way I have a spot 
for throwing sticky notes to pre-plan things um, so that it's just my um, way of having a week already set up for that because so if you have a traditional weekly life planner that's like your two page weekly spread you have the dates already there so that if you need to flip to that week and write in an appointment or put a sticky note down you already have that there since I'm using a monthly planner that is just um, a month and a dashboard and a bunch of blank notes pages, I needed some way to indicate which, like a placeholder for those those weeks. So that's what I've done and that continues to work for me. I have not had any issues since I started doing that. It has been great. And um, that's something that I will definitely be doing going forward. Um, I am not going to buy a new planner for 2024 until the new stuff comes out in the middle of the year for the academic year. So um, I know there's a lot of people currently starting to look into setting up their planners for January 2024. A lot of people are on the calendar year, which I also used to be, so I totally get it. And um, so if that's you and you're trying to figure out how you want to set up your planner, that's something I suggest doing. Um, just get it all done ahead of time. <laughs> so let's go back to October since this is our October flip through. And um, this, there were some things I didn't like here. And so it's, I used these scripts that say family time and put them here on Saturdays to indicate that I wanted to have family time. It was important to me to, to start doing, to be more intentional about doing like fun seasonal activities with my family. And so I have here labels where I've indicated the types of things we were gonna be doing, but I think that adding the script here that says family time was just a little too chaotic. Like you can see how this Saturday, it's so crowded with stuff. And I don't like looking at that when it's crowded like that. So that's something I'm not going to be doing in the future. Um, I do like intentionally scheduling something that's important to me. So I will continue to schedule these types of things um, for my family and put them on my calendar so that when I'm planning my weeks, I know that that's something we can do together and it will like it'll it'll make sure it will happen okay so I, that's what i want to do but i don't need all the extra like uh, like the extra stickers to crowd up the planner so i'm not going to do that anymore the other thing that i loved doing was using these bw icons to indicate things in my planner without having to write down what it is because they mean the same thing every month um, some of them I need to get new ones. Like for example, here I have these gaming controllers. On this one, it indicates that I wanted to, I have scheduled myself a gaming night. I play Minecraft and I love it. And it's one of those things that I can easily forget about. It's like out of sight, out of mind kind of thing. It's a computer game, so it's not tangible. It's not something that I'm gonna see in my house like maybe my Kindle or another thing like a sewing project or a knitting project or just like a library book. Like I will see that and go, oh, I'm going to sit down and read. Well, I can't see the computer program. And so it's tucked away on my computer in my office. And so when I'm not um, thinking about that, I tend to forget to make the time to, to do a varied set of hobbies like um i can get very tunnel vision when it comes to certain things and so i will when i'm really like hyper focused on a certain activity i will only do that and like that's all i'm thinking about but then i burn myself out and then i kind of get sick of that thing and so to avoid that, I want to remind myself to do other things I like, not just, you know, I, I could just sit there and read for days at a time and then forget about other things that I like to do. And I just want to be 
a well-rounded person. I like more than one thing and I want to make sure I'm reminding myself to do other things. So anyway, that was a long way of saying this is a scheduled gaming night to play Minecraft. This one is the same icon, but this one is actually reminding me to resub to a streamer that I like to watch um, on Twitch. And they're the same icon. And so what I need to do is get a different icon to indicate that. Um, and I just haven't yet because I have a ton of stickers and I don't like to buy more stickers when I don't really need them. And so I think I'm going to switch this one to the TV one because it's like, it's, it's a program I watch essentially. And really the, the website is twitch.tv. So, I mean, it kind of works in my mind. I am assigning the TV to be that icon going forward. And then the same with this backpack. This backpack here indicates that I need to check on my son's lunch money account and refill it if necessary. Um, but this one, I, I use the backpack to indicate other things school related. And so I'm gonna change that and get, there's an apple icon, I think makes more sense because an apple always indicates school, but since it's an apple and it's edible, my brain will associate that with lunch. Um, so that's what I'm gonna do in the future as well. But the fact that I'm using icons here instead of labels and instead of writing and taking up space, that is working and I love it and I'm gonna keep doing that. The other thing I started doing was using these appointment labels here that have the times that fit in the appointment spot. These are from Planner Kate. They are V5 for the labels, the skinny labels, and then V34 for the times. And I got these both in Erin Condren muted colorway. And um, these little times here are printed on little rectangles that fit perfectly in the spot here on the labels. So you could totally just write in the times there, but I just think this is such a nice clean look and you can just pick the time you need and throw it on the label and there you go. And it's, it's small, so I still have more space here in my date square to write other things or add other stickers if necessary. And I'm going to continue to do that going forward. Um, I think I will purchase another set of these in the Erin Condren bold colorway as well, just, just to keep it like varied and have like something interesting. You know, I can have different colors. So here I have some older labels I've been using up that are in the Planner Cake colorway. And that orange is a little more like tangerine yellow and it doesn't match the Erin Condren colorway perfectly. And so I'm just using these up, but in the future when I repurchase labels, I'm going to only get the Erin Condren colorway labels. I just think it works better for the Erin Condren colorway that I love so much. And so that's what I'm gonna be doing going forward that way. And is there anything else on here? Um, oh, okay. So I started using the sidebar as my to-do list for the month. And that's something that I continued doing in November. And I, I feel like this is gonna keep working. Previously, I was using it that way as well, but I wasn't really putting, um, everything on there. I was moving stuff to the dashboard as well. So I was kind of splitting the tasks between the sidebar and the dashboard. Um, and I did that in, no in October, but going forward in November, I'm putting all of my tasks that I know of when I'm planning the month, I'm putting them all in the sidebar and I'm not going to break them into projects that I put on the dashboard page like I did here. And that is because I just want to have one spot to look. And so when I'm planning my weeks, I can check that sidebar and see if there's anything that I knew I wanted to do in that month, if I can make time or room for it in my schedule to do that week. I want one spot to have to look at for that instead of a bunch of different ones. 
Um, and then I had bills down here. Bills was something that was slowly getting removed from my planner over time. I think at the beginning of this planner, I was using all these bill due stickers and putting them on the days that the bills were due. And um, I stopped doing that because it was cluttering everything up. And for me, as much white space as possible is better. And so I didn't need that on the date. That wasn't something that I needed to see to um, stay organized, I guess you could say. And so I took it off here and in September, I moved it to its own spot on the dashboard. Well, in October, I moved it to just a spot on the sidebar. And for November, I just completely took the bills out altogether. So there's no bills anymore. I have a complete other system that my family uses that we use to manage our finances, our budget, whatever. And I just didn't need it in this planner. Um, I had it in here originally because I wanted to check and make sure that certain amounts got taken out. I was having a lot of trouble with Adobe um, for a while where they kept double charging me randomly. Um, and according to the internet, that's something they do often. <laughs> but um, I've since, I think I've figured that out and we're, we're good there. I haven't had any issues for a long time and I'm feeling comfortable like taking that off. And I just wasn't really using this. If it was taking up space I didn't need. It was adding chaos to the page. Um, the more stuff that's written on the planner, the more chaotic it feels to me. And then that adds to my stress levels. Um, that's just like an invisible thing that, well, I mean, it's not invisible, but like you don't realize when you're looking at something that's just so crowded with stickers and tasks and appointments and everything, you don't realize how much that's like contributing to your stress levels. Um, but it, it does, and maybe it doesn't for you, that's fine, but I would say that maybe experiment and see how you feel if you take off some of these things off of your planner that are just, that don't need to be on your, your schedule. Like maybe you're only putting in there because you bought stickers that are cute and that say certain things and you wanna use them, which I get, I understand completely. I've been there, I've done that. But since I've taken that stuff out of my process, it has honestly helped me so much. And if you take it out and you realize that you don't, that you want it back, you can always put it back. But um, I, I think that if you are doing everything you can to stay organized, but you're still feeling stressed, maybe audit your planning process and see if you're adding things to your planner that just don't need to be there. Just see, see how, see how that works. So um, everything here, we're starting to streamline. I'm starting to see that this kind of stuff is unnecessary and um, starting to see that I don't need to like buy stuff like this for this purpose in the future. So going to the next set of pages, this is my dashboard set up and um, I had a habit tracker here that I forgot about <laughs> and that's typical for me. There's some months that I will use it and feel really good about it and then there's some months that I just completely forget about it and just don't care. So uh, in November, I didn't, I didn't use the habit tracker and that is really honestly because I forgot to buy one. Um, I don't like the one that Erin Condren has provided here because it's not numbered with the dates. I just, I don't like it. And so I like to get the Planner Kate one. I didn't place my order. I completely just forgot to check out my cart. And so I used um, something else um, and just changed that section to work for November. I don't know if I will put the habits there in the future. That's still something I'm playing with. I have this Cultivate What Matters habit workbook that I'm kind of working through now. And then I also have the power sheets that um, this is going to help me get a better handle on how I want to do habits going forward. So that's up in the air still. Um, it may show up in the future. It may not. We'll see what happens. Um, I had some spots here that I just kind of broke out into different projects, like just home projects and cleaning projects. And then I had a spot here for other projects and I just didn't 
I didn't use it and um, I am just kind of leaving this spot blank in the future. I do like having a spot for school notes. Sometimes I fill it up, sometimes I don't, but I like to have a spot for it. So here this worked, but in November I used this section for it. So that's fine. I'm gonna keep the school notes section in my dashboard area always. And then my monthly menu plan will also stay on my dashboard area always. I love having my plan here so that I can flip through it, flip to it easily. I always know where to find it. I don't need to go searching anywhere. I used to keep it on my Google calendar and I may go back to that in the future. Right now, this is working and I like it. So um, for November, I'm in survival mode. And so I don't actually have it set up like this. I just have a one week plan for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And we're just gonna repeat that every week just for this month until we, until things settle down. So um, this, I will continue to always use this page for menu planning. Um, I love it and it's great and awesome and wonderful. <laughs> so these pages I had set up to be project pages and I used my Cultivate What Matters Break It Down project pad. I, this is not, they're not sticky notes. I used this Scotch brand glue stick. It's a repositionable glue stick. I used it to make them into sticky notes. I was intending to write out any notes and other like lists and stuff like that on these pages. I never did. I just completely dropped the ball on a lot of things in October and this was one of them and it just didn't happen. But in November, I did bring that into November. I actually decorated those pages and I do have a plan on things that I need to write here. So I'm still going to do it. Um, having the space set aside for this, I think is important so that I can have the lists associated with certain projects um, in the book that I'm using to plan because that's where I'm going to find the tasks and other things associated with those projects. So if those are important projects that really it matters if they get done, then I have a spot to find those things to add to my to-do list for the week. And that's really important. It needs to be here. It needs to just be with those plans and not somewhere else in my house because I'm gonna forget about it. So um, even though it didn't really work for October, I am still doing it going forward. Now we get into the weeks. So this is where I have set aside my weeks. Um, each page is one week. I only need a page almost always. I've never felt like I needed more room um, this whole year I've been planning this way. Um, and it works for me. This is my tried and true layout. It's just like a half, half page is my weekly overview. The other half is my to-do list. I love this. This 90% of the time, this is how I, I plan. It works for me. If Erin Condren could make a life planner with this layout, I would love it. I would be so happy. It would make, it would just make my life easier. Um, it's not hard to draw this out. It's not at all. It takes me mi like minutes. Um, I do it every week. I have plan with me videos where I do this every week. It's not hard at all. And I don't mind doing it. Um, it's fun and I like that I can kind of color it in and make it my own. Um, but if they made a planner with this layout, I would just, I would love it. I would be over the moon with it, but this works and um, it frees up space for me to do whatever I want. Um, in previous months, I have just used the page without this and just used it as a list. So that works too. It's it's just really the freedom to do, to do anything I want on these pages um, is what I love about the monthly planner. And um, I can't imagine going back to another planner. So all of these stickers here are Planner Kate and they're just the Halloween stickers that I love. These ones were from this year. These ones were from a clip art sheet. 
I draw this out using an Erin Condren dual tip marker. I use the black side to draw out the grid and then I'll use the highlighter side to add some color. Actually, this one ended up being this focused line purple because it looked better. Um, but that's really, I just, I'm using my Erin Condren pens and um, using just very minimal stickers and I like it. It gets, it's enough for me to feel creative and kind of work that part of my personality into planning, but really it's functional. I'm making my list and I'm crossing things off my list. I'm not cluttering it up with a bunch of stuff that's stressing me out. Um, the things that are on my list are the things that I need to look at, that I need to be thinking about when I'm in this planner. It's not stuff that has to do with work. Um, when I'm looking at this planner, it's because I'm trying to figure out what else do I need to do for my home or my family or my personal life. Um, that's what this planner is for. And so I'm not having all this other stuff in that planner. And that's, it's helping me not get distracted with things that are irrelevant to the time that I have. So that is how this is working. Um, and I love it. Like you can see that I just, you know, keep doing this because it keeps working. <laughs> and um, this one I used um, Aaron Condren um, sticker, monthly sticker book stickers here. And that was a Planner Kate sticker. So, um, and then I used my, uh, this bookmark, which actually came from a life planner that I have in my stash. The Erin Condren Monthly Planner does not come with the Snap-In bookmark, but um, you can get all kinds of Snap-In bookmarks and things from Erin Condren. Um, but I, I like the bookmark because it's big enough for me to draw the grid and so it's, always with my planner when I need it. I actually need to clean it off um, because you can, I don't know if you can see that. Using the ruler as a straight edge with the, the marker has uh, stained it, but I just need to get some alcohol and clean that off because it does rub off. And then we've got this week, a lot of times you'll see, I just put a strip of washi at the top and I feel like, um, actually I didn't even do that here. I just, um, put some deco up there, but the strip of washi at the top is kind of like, all the deco I really feel like I need. I'll put a couple little pieces here and there, but even when I'm doing these, I still feel really awkward with it. Like, I just don't, for me, putting deco and taking up space that I might need to write in doesn't really work for me, but usually on weekends, by the time I'm in the weekend on my planner, I'm not actually writing anything anymore. I'm just trying to catch up on stuff. So usually the weekend is like a safe spot to put deco. Um, but yeah, that is really all I've been doing here. I have extra pages in the back that I haven't been using. Sometimes I'll make um, random lists or take notes here, um, here and there as needed. It's nice to know that those pages are there, but it doesn't bother me that I, don't use them all. It just doesn't, like, it's a tool for me to stay organized. Some months I'll go back and, because I know there's blank pages back there, if I just need to jot stuff down and uh, that's fine. I don't, it doesn't need to be like set up perfectly for the month. Like I might go back into July and use a July page that I know I had an extra page in just to take a random note that has something to do with October. Like it just doesn't, it doesn't bother me. And so that is how I used my Erin Condren monthly planner in the month of October. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you really liked it, please consider subscribing. I post one of these flip through videos every month. And so if you liked this one, you're gonna like the other ones too. And I would love to see you in the next one. Until then, embrace your imperfections and just be you. Bye.